My boy Togata, aka Ten Ten, aka Vault Boy, aka Lucas, aka Small Might, aka You Wish He Was the Main Character. Finally, the Big Three has officially been introduced. I have waited so long. I've, I've waited so long to see my boy Togata finally animated as a fan of the manga to finally see it. I'm happy. I'm really happy right now. Like, I'm legitimately happy. And it's not just Togata, but there was two other things that happened in this episode that made me as a fan, I've been waiting for a long time, it finally got animated, and that was the stuff with Twice, and also we got to see Overhaul. There, there was some really good scenes in this episode, and just like... I'm going to be just straight up with you anime onlys right now. This episode was just mainly set up for season 4. I mean, it's very obvious by now that My Hero Academia is kind of a success. I mean, when you look at the movie and you look at the anime and the manga, it's a very successful series. And obviously, they're not going to just end it at season 3. I mean, we might not have a season 4 announcement maybe at the end of, you know, season 3 like we did with season 2. But at the very least, it's a given that we're going to be getting a season 4. And the reason why I say that is because they wouldn't go out of their way do all this gradual setup with the pacing and the filler episodes they've done to end the series where I thought it was going to end at, like, you know, season three, like, they wouldn't have went this far. Studio Bones wouldn't have gone this far to kind of have, like, overhaul introduced towards the end of season three with also the big three introduced if they weren't planning for season four. It's just too successful. But it's going to suck, though, because next week is the finale, and so when it finally rolls around, we're going to have to realize that we can't look forward to every single Saturday morning for a new My Hero Academia episode. That's, uh... That's the hard part about all this, the harsh truth on how this season, this anime season is coming to an end. It's obvious that season four is going to happen, especially after this episode. They wouldn't have done all this careful planning and the little hints and nods towards the next arc if they weren't going to do so. Because the entire point of this episode was set up for season four. I mean, it sets the tone for season four. Normally, when it comes to this series, we're always following the MC, or we're following the good guys. We're following the heroes of this story. If we're not following Izuku, we're following the heroes. And yes, sometimes we do shift over to Shigaraki, which is what happened at the end of season two. We saw Shigaraki's mentality and how he changed, how he got his own motive, and you know, he was willing to use, you know, Stain as a stepping stone to be able to move on forward, which was a really critical moment. And if you notice, every time like a season comes to an end, there's kind of like this like female that goes on to where, you know, Studio Bones wants to throw in the villain scenes at the end to kind of set the tone for the next season. It's kind of like, you know, what the villains have been up to. And we get to see that from Twice's perspective on how his life is, how he goes to day-by-day -day basis, and, you know, how he operates in the criminal world. When you first see the episode open up, you see a character just, you know, smoking, and you don't really know who he is. Like, if you're not a manga reader, and you see this man for the first time, and you've never been spoiled, you're gonna be like, who the hell is this? Like, am I watching the same series? That's what you're probably asking yourself, like, if you are you watching the right series when you see a character like this? But you'll realize, like, yeah, it is My Hero Academia I clicked on, but who the hell is this? And as it you know, continues, you're constantly questioning, who is this character? You might recognize him, maybe from the voice acting, but even then, you might not truly know. And then eventually, the reveal happens to where you find out that it's actually twice. And that's the stunning revelation of the first half. You get to see how he is outside of being just a regular villain. For instance, as we've always seen him, he's always been a part of the League of Villains. He's someone that, you know, just operates with him. He's the crazy comedy relief type character we see with their group. And this, you know, first half of the episode was showcasing or putting a spotlight on twice showing there's a lot more going on than just a comedy relief character. And anyone that thought he was just comedy relief probably kind of feel a little bit bad about themselves. They probably feel like, whoa, I shouldn't have been feeling like that towards him because he's a very complex character. There's a lot going on with him. He has a very dark and gritty backstory. So let's get right into that. So twice, as we know as a character, like looking at before this episode, we knew he always had like this 
split personality comedy gag thing going on. That's what we all assumed. He had a Deadpool type character design. He, you know, he kind of acted like Deadpool because he was over the top. I mean, he constantly was disagreeing with himself and all that. It was very interesting. It made him for a very unique character. It, it definitely, he stood out to me amongst all the characters of the League of Villains. He was definitely one of the most interesting. And this lets us know that the reason why he has this side of him, this comedy relief, is not because he's just doing it, but it's the side effect of his quirk, which this is something that becomes a very big part of the series, and it's been a, a reoccurring theme since the very beginning. Let's talk about Shigaraki for a second. Shigaraki, as I've already discussed in my Season 2 reviews and parts of Season 3, Shigaraki as a character, he is someone that was forced in his situation because of the way his quirk is, but also how heroes never saved him, and how his quirk could literally just disintegrate people by putting all five fingers on someone. He could accidentally harm someone when he was a child, and he didn't mean it, and it's implied that that's what happened to his father. And so, Obviously, negative effects, bad, you know, effects of quirks can really harm someone's upbringing. In, in this case, that's what happened twice. He's in a very similar situation as Shigaraki. You know, his type of quirk led to his mental breakdown to where he's at right now, and he no longer can really operate in hero society or as a proper person just because of how his quirk is. I mean, let's look at this, okay? His quirk is literally able to, he's able to duplicate himself. And we've always seen him being able to duplicate others. We've seen this with Dobby in the earlier stages of season three. We've seen that. But the thing is, is that he also can duplicate himself, but he obviously does not want to do that, which is a type of, like, dilemma that you don't normally see in a shonen series. See, twice, he has an issue to where he doesn't even know if he really is the real him. See, because of his quirk and how he can duplicate himself, and his, you know, duplicates can duplicate themselves... He doesn't really know who was really the real one at the end of the day. When they got in a big fight and they all just started ending each other, he had no idea when everything was, uh, like everybody died or whatever, and he was the only one left, he had no idea if he truly was the real one. Now, I know many are going to say, but Chibi, it's already been stated that once, you know, a certain clone takes amount of damage, that they disappear, they turn into, like, this pool, which we have seen even with Dobby. It's something that's been there. But we also got to remember something. What if, okay, okay, what if, like, the clones actually killed the real body, what would happen to the clones? Because would that mean that they would become the real body? See, that's a big what if when it comes to the quirk, because you don't really know how that would work. See, if the main body, the original body, was to die, but the clones are still there, but remember, they don't disappear until they take a certain amount of damage. So, the question is, if the main body died, would one of the clones take the spot of the main body and become the real thing? See, that's the thing about the quirk that makes it so interesting, is the twice that we know, is he actually, you know, the real thing? Like, is it the real twice, the original, or is he a clone, a fake? And he's constantly questioning himself, and you can see that the voice that's inside of his head, the voice that's always talking and, like, you know, disputing with him, saying the opposite, is actually just his broken mind and the split personality he has after, you know, how his quirk has affected him so you know twice his backstory it's very dark it's very different from what we have seen it definitely gives clarity to how once again quirks are not always a good thing for people quirks can really be a negative thing for so many people in the world causing so much harm to them and it's very similar to the situation you would see something like an x-men if you remember an x-men there was a character that you know was obviously very harmed by their powers and eventually they wanted their powers to go away that's kind of like this twice as an individual that, you know, maybe he would be better off if he never had his quirk, or some characters would be better off if they never had a quirk to begin with, because it harms them in a really bad way. So that's the fascinating part about Twice's backstory. It shows that he wasn't, you know, a villain by choice. He didn't become a villain because he wanted to. He was literally forced in that situation because of how his quirk really was, and he literally became psychotic. His mind broke. He didn't really know how to process things because of it. He didn't know if he was really, really or not. So yeah, it's a an interesting perspective on the League of Villains. Definitely gives insight to a character that you wouldn't think would be this like, you know, complex. And so that's one of the big reasons why I really loved Horikoshi as a writer. Like, it's when I really started realizing that Horikoshi, he really knows how to dive in to characters, even the non-main character, and dive into support characters and give the development. And that's what we saw here with Twice. So getting off of that, Hero Society is obviously taking a lot of changes. 
And when we look at the recent episodes and the whole exam with Izuku and everybody, the whole reason why the exam was a little bit harder than normal and why they're taking precautions allowing first years to take the test or whatever is because of the new change in times, how the villains are starting to organize, you know, work together, you know, thanks to All Might's fall, they need more heroes on the street to do things, but they need quality heroes that could actually potentially, you know, replace All Might. So, we've seen the effects of All Might and him no longer being there, they lost their symbol and how it's changed the hero side of the story. But now, with this episode, we got to see kind of how the villain side has changed as well. Like, for instance, Dobby in this episode, you see how there's many people organizing, trying to do stuff, and Dobby just straight up, like, just ends them all instantly. And the reason why is, is because they're not really that good. Even though they're organized, they're not really, you know, being really smart about things, and so he's just ending them. And then you see how Overhaul also, you know, he was really upset with how they, you know, were just going about being petty feast. He's like, if you're going to do something, if you're going to work as a group, you know, do it better and all that. And you see how they all just got ended. So it really just shows that villain society is also changing. It's turning into more powerful groups, organizations working together to really get things done. And this is something that was also implied in the exam as well, how villain groups are starting to work together, big groups, to get things done, to do their activities. And we are getting to see the start of that. The League of Villains was just a start. Now we're seeing other organizations starting to rise up, which is overhaul. We get to see him in this episode, which let's talk about him for a second. Now, I know for a fact many anime onlys have probably seen Overhaul maybe once or twice, maybe through, like, the community, because Overhaul is a fairly popular, popular villain. He, he's very popular. I'm not going to give any spoilers, nothing like that, but he's very popular for good reason as well. He's a very unique villain. He's a different villain from everything before. Like, we've seen villains that are wanting power. We've seen the in-game villain, this super villain, which is, you know, all for one. We've seen Shigaraki, which is a villain in training, slowly building up. We've seen a man that, you know, had a very broken, like, ideology that's very wrong, and, you know, he was forcing it onto others, which was Stain. We've seen, you know, the development or the different villains throughout the series, and Overhaul is entirely different from everything that comes before him, and it really makes for a very interesting arc. Now, the arc we're about to get into, at least season four, is one of the longest arcs of the manga. And just to be straight up with you anime onlys, there are some parts of the manga arc that some didn't like. There were some people that really didn't like the arc, and it's understandable. There is some things about it that could make people upset, but at the same time, there's things that people didn't really understand at the time until it was, you know, explained later on in the manga, and I'm very curious to see how you anime onlys react to Overhaul as he gets more development, characterization, and just seeing how he is as a villain, how he betrays himself. Now, I believe we'll probably get one more scene with Overhaul in the next episode. I could be wrong there, but I believe we'll probably have some form of set with Overhaul in the next episode. Now, pretty much just be the end of it, and then we'll have to wait for season four, which I am looking forward to. But, speaking of Overhaul, though, I just want to point out the fact that Overhaul... As a character, if you look at his design, he has a Plague Doctor mask on. And he does talk about, like, a plague or a disease when, you know, he ends that villain group in this episode, which fits his theme. Now, I'm not gonna get into certain details, because spoilers, obviously, but his design is very unique, and it definitely kind of gives an insight to maybe what his character is like. We get set up for the big three and Izuku on house arrest and how, you know, things around him are still moving forward even without him, how he's losing time, he's losing progress. With the house arrest, you see, he lost a lot of time. You would think three days isn't that much, but when it comes to, like, a high prestigious school like, you know, UA and all the work they have to do, that's a lot of time, a lot of work that you lose in that given time, that day. And Izuku realized he lost a lot of information. He needs to use as much time as he can to be able to catch up to what he missed in those few days. And this goes even more for Bakugo, which, as we know, he's supposed to take, you know, extra classes to be able to retake the exam. So, I mean, Bakugo's even more behind than Izuku is because he has a four-day house arrest instead of three like Izuku, but also he had to take or retake exam tests, like prep up for it once again. So Bakugo's in a very bad spot. It could easily affect his future because of what just happened here. So you can kind of see that 
most likely Bakugo is probably never going to want to make the same mistake again, because if he ever does that again, like, you know, tries to attack Izuku and Izuku attacks back, it could potentially end up to where they can never be a hero, because if they fall behind on their studies, or they're not able to pass exams or whatever, it's over. You know, it's over. They're done. And that's the, you know, the situation that Bakugo and Izuku are currently in. They lost a lot of time with what they did, their actions. So Togata's introduction, I love how it was done in the anime. It was so, it was so nonchalant. It, it, it was so funny because, like, Izuku's just walking, taking out trash. And all of a sudden, you just see this head peeking out of the wall. And just like, hmm? But he's just looking at Izuku. <laughs> It, it's great because Izuku's just straight up like he's just walking I mean he just sees a head in the wall and like if you saw something like that you'd probably freak out too but then all of a sudden he disappears and when he's on the ground and all that and you see his head sticking out of the ground and you're like what the hell and then he just disappears instantly again it's just it's uh it's weird now I'm not gonna give any insight into what Togata is doing I'll leave that for you know fury crafting for you anime only so when it's revealed I'll discuss it but until then I'm not gonna talk about what his quirk is or anything like that but Togata love it I love his introduction it was freaking great and honestly I think they nailed it perfectly the voice actor for Togata was definitely spot on probably one of the best uh, voice actors I think for the job and speaking of voice acting I also love you know overhaul's voice actor as well it's very different from the voice I was probably like you know expecting to hear from an anime and I'm glad it actually fits his theme his vibe compared to what I'm used to from like a, a pretty boy villain you'd think it'd be like a, a nice like calm like, you know, uh, voice actor from, let's say, a shoujo or something, like, you know, a pretty boy character, like, voice actor, I'm glad that wasn't really the case for Overhaul. He has a really, really cool voice, and I cannot wait to see it more. I cannot wait to hear his voice more as the series goes on. But okay, I think I want to end this video here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And I love you guys. Please be safe. Cheat me out.